I honestly don't know when I'm gonna play my next tennis match. Naomi Osaka was born on October 16th, 1997 and is a professional tennis player. She's been ranked number one by WTA, the Women's Tennis Association. She is the first Asian women's tennis player to hold up the top place in singles. She's a Grand Slam champion four times. Two of her seven WTA Tour victories were at the premier mandatory level. Osaka won her first two Grand Slam singles titles in back-to-back -back Grand Slam competitions at the 2018 US Open and the 2019 Australian Open. She became the first woman since Serena Williams in 2015 to win back-to-back -back Grand Slam singles titles and the first since Jennifer Capriati in 2001 to win her first two consecutive majors. But recently, there are some turndowns in her career as she pulled off from the French Open and Wimbledon event this year. She's even told that the injury also caused her defeat in Madrid earlier this year. This withdrawal has caused her many side effects. In this video, I'll be talking about the Achilles injury that has caused a lot to Naomi Osaka. We will also talk about the effects of this injury on her health and the depression phase she's gone through. But before we move forward, please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon. Naomi Osaka felt pain in Madrid During the Madrid Open in May 2022, Naomi Osaka suffered a very surprising defeat from Sara Cerebres Tormo. She was defeated by Sara by 6-3-6-1. Due to this defeat, she exited the event. After losing the match, she told WTA Insider that she was hampered by an Achilles injury. She defeated Anastasia Potapova in the first round of Madrid and later on revealed that she felt pain in her Achilles after her opening match with Kasia Magica before. But the pain was not severe enough, which is why she did not pull out of the tournament. She took a rest for one day and took a day off. She also told that she has suffered from it like two years ago in Miami or someplace else. But she was not imagining it to become such a huge problem. She said that she was not expecting Achilles to be such a big problem unless something big happens. Osaka withdraws from Wimbledon Before the start of the Wimbledon event, there was a lot of talks about whether Naomi Osaka will participate in the event or not. These questions were aroused after the All England Club banned Russian and Belarusian players to participate in the event due to the Russia-Ukraine war. The 24-year-old Naomi Osaka was considering her participation and playing in ATP and WTA tours due to the ban. Later on, she tweeted and announced that she won't be participating in Wimbledon. Well, she did not particularly talk about Wimbledon, but the picture she posted in her tweet was of herself playing on the grass court and the caption had an emoji of a grass blade. She tweeted that her Achilles is not completely fine and she's not fully recovered from the injury. Osaka's name was on the Wimbledon singles registration list when it was made public before the event started, but she did not compete in any of the grass court warm-up competitions. She said, Given the situation, I'm leaning further toward not playing. I'm the kind of player who gets inspired when my ranking improves. She continued, I feel that if I play in Wimbledon without points, it's more of an exhibition. This measure's goal was positive, but the implementation is all over the place. Her tweet also said that she will participate in the event next year. Later on, Wimbledon tweeted in response to Naomi Osaka's tweet and wished her a speedy recovery. It is her second Wimbledon event in a row that she's not played. Last year, she skipped Wimbledon after she quit the French Open in a row over refusing to attend the mandatory news conference at Roland Garros. Not doing Roland Garros Before the French Open tournament of 2021, Naomi Osaka announced she would not be participating in the Roland Garros. She was threatened with harsher sanctions and was fined $15,000. Many professional athletes and sport writers have commented on her choice, some with more sympathy than others. After facing criticism and winning the first round of the French Open, Osaka opted to abruptly withdraw from the competition. Osaka recently opened out in an interview with CBS News and said she stayed home for two weeks after the incident at the French Open. She talked about the depression she has suffered after facing a lot of criticism. She said that at the time it all happened she was really sad and she was embarrassed after facing so many comments and had no idea how to deal with them as it was her first time getting a lot of attention on media. I don't know, for about two weeks, I sort of hid inside my house. Naomi Osaka also told the story of a mother who was glad that she opened up about her depression and mental health issue. This mother used to follow Naomi Osaka and met her outside a grocery store. 
There, she told Naomi that her depression talk has helped her son a lot, who is dealing with anxiety. At that moment, Naomi Osaka said that she realized that she has actually helped someone by talking about her mental health issues, and she is very happy and satisfied that she opened up about this. Naomi Osaka talked about how the media plays a negative role in players' mental health. Naomi Osaka has also talked about how media is playing a negative role in the mental health of different players. Osaka referred to various press request regulations as outdated. She said, You and I have probably seen videos of athletes sobbing in the press room after a defeat. I think the entire scenario is kicking someone while they're down, and I don't understand the justification. Press conferences after games are frequently seen as advantageous for both journalists and players. Although Osaka acknowledged that the tennis press has always been good to me, she yet claimed that speaking to the media caused her great waves of nervousness. Reporters who aim to understand their subjects value such vulnerable moments after a win or loss. What psychologists think about this? Psychologists say Osaka should be commended for speaking openly about her mental health in a culture that is still skeptical of wounds it cannot see, for asserting boundaries to keep herself safe even when at the expense of her career, and for challenging her sport, the media, and the public to rethink what we expect of athletes. This is true despite the complexity of the story and the fact that the public is still unaware of Osaka's health and the communication between her and tennis officials. Lynn Bufka, a senior director of the American Psychological Association, stated that so much of the world has been built up that this is the way we do it. This is the way we've always done it, and it's going to operate this way. There is a threat that we may have to do things differently, even if ultimately it turns out to be a better way. If someone questions it, whether it's interviewing athletes, whether they win or lose, or constantly asking them questions even while they're struggling. The conflict between a player's duty to their sport and the duty to themselves is highlighted by the dispute, according to Candice Williams, a licensed professional counselor in the athletics department at Ohio State University. People have a pretty narrow perspective on athletes. Instead of seeing them as humans, they see them as actors. It demonstrates that we still have a way to go in terms of normalizing the idea that someone might be mentally unwell while still being functional and desiring some alone time. I applaud her for drawing that line, he said. Bufka and Williams both said if Naomi Osaka had suffered from a physical injury, then the circumstances and comments would have been different. Because when people know that some physical sickness is keeping the person from attending any event, then they do not give negative comments on the situation. We wouldn't be asking, is this real or is this fake? If she had an ACL tear, an ankle sprain, a wrist injury, an elbow injury, or an injured shoulder, said Williams. So, this was all from the video. Hope you all liked it. What are your thoughts on the opening up of Naomi Osaka about her depression and anxiety issues? Was this a good move for a player to talk about this, or she should have kept it to herself? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Also, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up.